Everything to do with Chernobyl is suddenly hot again. We're on a movie set in Budapest, where a Russian movie crew is playing catch-up with the wildly popular HBO Chernobyl miniseries. It's making a Russian blockbuster version of the accident at reactor number four. Its star and director is Danila Kozlovsky. I think it's extremely important to make such a film to remind what happened in 1986. It's very important. We're not allowed to forget. We have no right to forget. Roll camera, roll sound. Kozlowski says his focus is on the so-called liquidators, the men who braved astronomical levels of radiation to drain water from under the stricken reactor and save Europe from an even worse radioactive cloud. I believe our film, this is a kind of patriotic film in a very good way. The HBO series hailed for its authentic portrayal of life in Soviet times and its searing criticisms of the government cover-up has sparked a Chernobyl revival. Well, the problem with nuclear stuff inside is that... Tour operators report a 30% increase in visitors to the Chernobyl site, 90 kilometers north of Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. Chernobyl souvenirs have never been more popular. Disaster tourism is booming. Most people we talked to had seen the HBO series. It shook me, to be quite honest. I sort of looked at it and I thought, I, I knew about Chernobyl, but I didn't really have a feel for the catastrophe and how it all unfolded. We visited on a warm fall day recently. There's a 600 square kilometer exclusion zone where the radioactive fallout was the most intense. Access is restricted, but surprisingly, we learned it's far from empty. In fact, in the town of Chernobyl itself, 12 kilometers from ground zero, we met a woman who lived here when the explosion happened, and she's still here today. <laughs> her name is Maria Matrivna, babushka Maria to her friends. She was a cleaning lady at the Chernobyl reactor. I've been living here for more than 80 years, she told us. If the radiation hasn't killed me yet, I've got nothing to be scared of. She's happy that all the interest has more people coming to her near-empty city and dropping by to say hi, though notably not her grandkids. The contamination is still bad enough that no one under the age of 18 is even allowed to visit. Radioactive isotopes degrade at different rates, so in some places the radiation isn't any higher than normal, but in other spots, extended exposure could be lethal. With dosimeters to measure our own exposure and a Geiger counter to test the radioactivity around us, we entered one abandoned village with our guide, Victoria Brosko. Uh, 0.26, 28, nothing dangerous, but once I bring it closer to the soil, 3.18, 6.71, 7.47. Is it safe to stand here? Well, um, it's safe if for, if for some minutes. We don't usually live in here. We do not consume the products from here. If we stood in this spot for an hour, we'd get a day's worth of natural radiation. As for the reactor itself, you can actually get pretty close, just a few dozen meters away. The destroyed unit is hidden under a new stainless steel dome. Firefighters, the first of them. Ukraine's government, which badly wants more foreign tourists, is promising to expand tourism here even more, including into areas previously off limits. If you put on a hazmat suit and you're very brave, you can now actually go inside the old control room of reactor four, but radiation levels are over 40,000 times what they are out here. We said no thanks. That 40,000 figure was widely reported after local media visited the control room recently, but Ukrainian officials insist the number is misleading as the tours bypass the most toxic areas and visitors get only a small, manageable dose of radiation. It, you know, that, that 
to me seems uh, like a very uh, unwise thing to, to be doing. Canadian scientist Timothy Mousseau supports visiting Chernobyl, but not such extreme tourism. Mousseau has been coming here for 15 years to study the radiation in animals and plants in the exclusion zone. We did not venture into the control room number four simply because uh, the, the radiation levels in control room number one, which is, you know, half a half a kilometer away, or almost a kilometer away, uh, are, are also, uh, you know, above what we would normally want to experience. <laughs> Mousseau says the potential impact of even larger crowds is also concerning. Take the abandoned city of Pripyat, probably the most fascinating part of any Chernobyl visit. It's just three kilometers from the reactor. Today, it's frozen in time. Tourists can wander through the former amusement park unaccompanied. But Mousseau says the ground remains contaminated and with large numbers of visitors, the risk of disturbing buried radioactive particles and sending them into the air again is high. That aspect of tourism in this area is something I do not support and, and think is, 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 is quite foolhardy, really. With the increased interest, though, has also come renewed appreciation for those who risk their lives to prevent the disaster from being even worse. Igor Pizminski and Andrei Mizko were both helicopter pilots. And just hours after the explosion, they were ordered to fly over the burning reactor as it spewed out radiation, dumping loads of sand and boron on the fire. Ну, тогда мы на тот момент, я еще раз говорю, мы не думали о радиации, мы думали, как э, выполнить эту задачу, пере, которая перед нами стояла. Those flights likely cut short both of their careers. Andre had to stop flying as his internal organs were damaged. Radiation was to blame. Igor says seeing the disaster recreated so vividly on TV has allowed them to experience new pride about their role. И оно вот по-новому дает понимание того, что все-таки та работа, которая была выполнена многими людьми, в том числе и мной, была выполнена не зря, и об этом стоит говорить и дальше. А в своей стране нам внимание, благодаря сериалу «Чернобыль», только сейчас колыхнулся, опять к нам интерес этот появился. Вспомнили за нас. Fans of the Chernobyl story will have to wait until the fall of 2020 to see how the Russian movie producers tell their version of the story. And remarkably, Russia's Atomic Energy Corporation, Ross Atom, is helping finance it. Such is its renewed appeal that even the nuclear energy industry sees value and linking itself to the heroes of Chernobyl. Chris Brown, CBC News in Chernobyl, Ukraine.